last weekend, the lads and I went out to a local spot and managed to get ourselves a few nice goldfish. I did get another one and I'll play that video now. Wasn't the best little hunt and stalk technique there, but I did manage to bag it. Sometimes you get lucky like that. Uh, when I am hunting these guys, I like to lie on the bottom, just play it cool, stay calm, sometimes throw a little sand or something. They're very inquisitive, so they'll come over and check it out. And as long as you're not behaving aggressively and trying to chase them or run after them, usually they'll actually come in to have a look at what you're doing. We call these guys black spot goatfish. Um, we also get red mullet or a blue line goatfish. They're a little bit different, a bit red, blue lines on the face, no black spot actually on the tail like these guys have. This nice goat that we got this morning. You can actually see where the shark that was hanging around had a munch on him. Thing you're doing with skin or anything like that, you definitely want to scale them before the dry age. So you can either cut the scales off with a knife onto them, or in this case, a nice thin edge spoon and scrape them off. not going to be using any fresh water. I don't like to use any fresh water on my fish as it does tend to make them go bad quicker unfortunately. Um, it is very convenient to wash them with fresh water however what happens is the water gets stuck in all these little pockets you can see here and it will turn the meat no good very quickly. But fresh water allows the bacteria to breed and grow and live and everything so it is no good for the meat so we're just gonna wipe him off with some paper towel hook in through the tail make sure that's in nice and then this lud can go to the fridge, ready to sit for a few days. Thinking for the goatfish is that we're gonna make a lemon myrtle butter, and then we're gonna do another one with some saltbush pesto. I haven't made saltbush pesto before, so we'll see how that goes. We've got the saltbush just here and we've got our lemon myrtle just here. Very, very cool plant. Unfortunately, the one that I'm growing here in the backyard doesn't get a lot of salt water like you would find in, in estuaries and things like that. They can survive with pretty high concentrations of salt in the water. They can also survive with basically no watering because of their ability to store extra salt. They can absorb all sorts of random little tiny scraps of moisture in them. So we're just gonna take a bunch of these shooty bits off. So we wanna keep it low, try and encourage it to get bushy. They have in fact recently cleared it to be used for cattle feed. So when the cattle eat the salty plant, it actually salts the meat of the cow. So I have heard. So that's our salt bush there, and some lemon myrtle. Take these two, and then we'll have plenty of room to come back. So, lemon myrtle butter. We're gonna to wanna to start by picking the leaves off the stem here. And once we've done that, we wanna rip them up, and we wanna try and allow the butter to get to as much of the oil in these leaves as possible. Throw a stick of butter in here, kind of dramatic effect, but in reality, it is the worst way to melt your butter in a pan. You definitely want to chop this up and it will help you just melt it way quicker. So we're just going to melt the butter down here. We're going to keep stirring it just so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. Only a low heat just to get this melted and you can see it bubbling here. We don't want to bring it to a boil too far. Now this step's optional, but I do like blending it with a hand blender. Just like ripping the leaves up at the beginning, I think it just helps to expose as many of those oils as possible to the butter. 
yellow, golden, buttery goodness with that beautiful, subtle lemon flavor. The pesto, we're going to pick the leaves off the salt bush here. We're going to crush, peel and chop our garlic. We're going to add some native thyme as well. I think it just adds a nice little freshness to the pesto. Here we're going to toast some pine nuts. And once they start browning, you want to make sure you're moving them around plenty because they will burn very quick. I'm just going to reserve some of the pine nuts here for later on. And we're going to put a hell of a lot of olive oil in this. Need a little more lubrication in your pesto, just put a little bit more oil in there. Nothing wrong with a bit of olive oil. A bit of salt as well, keep it seasoned, keep it tasty. And I'm using a little bit of Romano cheese here, but you can use whatever you like. Parmesan and the sharper cheeses usually work pretty well. Alright, so we got our goatfish here. We're just going to start at the bottom of the fish, along that bottom edge of the spine, and working our way up to the top without actually piercing the top there. So we're just going to slice our way over to the rib bones over here, and then get our scissors and cut through them. Once you're through those rib bones, you want to continue up the spine as you were, getting to that top portion near that top fin. And once we've done the one side, we'll move on to the other, just doing exactly the same thing. Paper towel, as always, wiping things down as we go. You want to cut that spine just back from the head. And we're going to cut the tail end of the spine and then work our scissors along right against the skin to cut that spine out of the fish. Now I'm gonna use all of these bones for stock. However, these more bloodied sections, I will not keep. Uh, they're only good for fertilizer or burley. They do tend to make your stocks a bit fishy. So I'm just using some paper towel there to clean up and little bits of blood and things left over. And we're just gonna use some scissors to take off the fins because they will burn pretty quick on the hot coals. Split the head in half and flatten it out. And we're gonna work our knife under the rib bones there, following them up and following them back down to the edge of the fish. You can see there some of those orange oils under the skin. Those are those crabby flavored oils. Same for the other side, work the knife under the rib bones and work our way up and out and then down to the edge of the fillet as well. So here we've got our tweezers. We're just gonna take out the pin bones that run down the lateral line of the fish. That's like horizontal across the fillet. You're gonna find the little pin bones there. You can feel them out with your fingers or your thumb and then use a pair of tweezers or fish pliers to pull them out. These will just make the fish way more enjoyable to eat. You're not having to pick the little bones out of your mouth. Just gonna fill it this little guy here as normal. And again, all those bones and head and everything going into the stock later on. So knife in at the top of the fish, all the way to the tail and running it down that spine. we're going to go through and just push the knife through those ribs there. Same on the other side. 
And as we get to those ribs, cut straight through them. Pushing the knife in under the ribs, popping it out, and then cutting down away from you towards the edge of the fillet. Again, you can see that little orange, fatty, oily bit under the skin there. Unreal flavor, my favorite part of the fish. Same again, pin bones out, fish tweezers or pliers. It'll just make your whole experience of eating the fish much more enjoyable. Finally cooling down after a stinger of a day, sweating my ring out, dripping, and fire is on. Ready for some goatee. You just want to salt the meat of your fish, ghee or some kind of oil. I love ghee because it does sort of stay a bit more solid and you can spread it quite easily without it running off. And you want to spread that all over the skin to get a nice crust. see here over the coals all that ghee dripping down unfortunately I think it actually pushed the flames up a little too high and this guy got pretty crispy uh, still unreal flavor there we go that lemon myrtle butter just spreading it on as it cooks dripping it over the top just put the fillets on I'm not going to do any too much with these guys I just oiled them and salted them Ooh. That's the shot. Nice crispy fillets and a nice crispy butterfly goat right there. Drizzle that lemon myrtle butter all over the top of this guy. We got our pesto on our fillets. We're gonna put a blob on and then spread it with the spoon there. And finish it with a couple little pine nuts on top that we reserved earlier. Hope you guys enjoyed. Maybe you learned something, maybe you're keen to try something new, maybe you want to subscribe and stay tuned for some more epic stuff coming up.